Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Roser, and today, at this very early morning, I'm going to do a run of Actraiser, specifically the professional mode, as you may have seen on your screen. Um, so, professional mode is like, first of all, Actraiser is basically like an action game slash. Oh, yeah, they forgot to move the camera. Um, so. It's an action slash simulator game uh, where you switch between those two game styles, um, but professional mode just skips the entire simulator. So we will just do all the platforming sections one by one without like any breaks whatsoever. Um, yeah, I think like whenever they're ready, then they're ready. Yeah, okay. Still setting up some stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, I guess we're ready now, right? Alright. Okay. Yeah, we can start the countdown in 3, 2, 1, and go. Alright. Um, so, this is the very first stage, Fillmore Act 1. Uh, it's probably like. Uh, Actually, one of like the more intense stage when it comes to execution-wise. Even though like the movement is like very simple, like you have a jump, you have a slash button. Um, there is, it's very simple. Like you don't really have like any other kinds of tricks that you have. Normally, you would have also had magic, but in professional mode, it's disabled for uh, balance reasons. So instead, we are just gonna hack and slash our way. Section. And in the beginning, we basically just skip uh, all the mandatory fights. So yeah, this is the Centaur. Um, Centaur, we just basically just damage boost and just use our normal attacks. And it's very simple, right? It's just we move all the way to the left, damage boost through it. Since like you always take two damage no matter what, except for certain obstacles where you just die instantly. Or just take one damage, but yeah, Centaur not very special. So Fillmore Act Two, it's the first time where we actually see water, um, and in the water we usually we just walk very slowly. The only exception is if you're oh wow, I actually got that trick. <laughs> I will explain that a little bit further when we get there. So in water you just want either want to jump or you just want to damage boost, because whenever you take damage, you move. Like, to have the normal walks. Okay, so this is the first trick that we're going to do. Um, it's some sort of wall clip when you get hit, and you have to press uh, on the wall that you want to cling into, and then just immediately uh, drop your input wherever you want to clip into it. And um, if you do it one frame right after. Um, you got hit, you will clip into the wall, and then you can just jump upwards and uh, climb all the way to the top. This saves quite a lot of time, because there's like a couple of enemies that you actively have to kill. So, it's a very simple skip, actually, even though it's like almost pretty perfect, I guess. So, um, the Minotaur is very slow, we can just like dodge it by just moving whenever it jumps up. And then he get like five hits in, and then yeah, it's like the boss fights. Unfortunately, like are not super complex besides like one or two of them. But yeah, this is Blood Pool. Um, so Blood Pool is like the very first level where we actually have like its death traps, which is like the purple pool down there. It's supposed to be blood, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think like blood is really purple, so yeah. Anyways, um, again here, we don't really care about like the health that we have, we just waltz through to the very end. So this is Manticore. Uh, Manticore, we start up by immediately jumping from one side to another. So we get some couple couple early hits in. And other than that, we just move around with him. And uh, yeah, that was a really good kill, actually. Like, this, I think like this is almost perfect. I mean, sure, I could get like one or two extra hits in if I was a little bit faster on the very first hit, but 
That was really good. Alright, uh, Blood Pool Act 2. Um, now we're in a castle, and uh, like the, the boss in this area is actually in a castle. It's just waiting for like a master. This is a character that we play. Yeah, innovative name, I know. But there is a reason why he's called the master and not something else. Anyways, um, so this section, yeah, we have spikes here, but we can purposely can just ignore it just fine. There is a trick that where you can skip one of those platforms. I am not going for it because um, it is a little bit frame dependent, since like you have like different kinds of like frames where you can jump. And depending on what frame you actually jump during your walk animation, you sometimes jump further, and so jump some, sometimes you don't even jump. There is... It's very specific, but usually like it's not a big deal in like most areas. Except like one or two tricks where you actually have to hit the right walk frame. Yeah. But luckily we're not going to do that during that run. Most simply because they are like very time consuming if you don't get it. Okay. Didn't get the first quick cycle here, but that's fine. So we'll grab the apple here just to f uh, fill up my HP. So, in order to save a little bit of time, I am healing up so that the timer doesn't. Uh, so, this is uh, Zebelin Wolf. Um, he has like eight different spawning platforms. And depending on where he lands, he, you can either hit him like half until half HP or like just a couple of hits. Here in that case, um, you want him on the on the lower platforms, um, if possible. This gives you like enough, barely enough hits to kill him in like two cycles. Unfortunately, I didn't get lucky in the third cycle, so. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but usually that's probably like the biggest uh, RNG point in the game. So like if you don't, sometimes you just lose runs because you don't get like perfect spawns. And that's the one major flaw this run has when it comes to the RNG department. But other than that, it's just pure execution. So this is Cassandora, it's a desert type stage. As you may have noticed, like every area has like a distinctive style of like stage. Um, so these are the two deserts. Cassandora is a desert stage and then Blood Pool was like the lake and Fillmore was like a forest and a large cave. Okay, so I will grab a one-up down there. Just again for safety purposes, since if I lose all of my lives, then the run is over. There is like no password system, there is like no safety measurement system you have to get back to the point where you actually game over it. Again, we conveniently get a get a full key here, and now this is the worm boss. Um, usually, like the optimal way is to get like seven hits in. The worst would be 5, which I just did, and like on average you usually get 6 hits in, which I did twice. So that was good, that was decent. But yeah, um, it it looks like a boss from like um, a Star Wars game. <laughs> this is like what people mostly compare it certain like assets to a little bit. Because it looks like similar like the, like the SNES so Star Wars games. So Cassandra actually, of course, since we're in a desert uh, area, we also have to go into a pyramid, right? So the pr this pyramid section, there is a jump that you can do here. Like you can land on the platform, and if you hit the right walk frame and hit at the, the except uh, specific tile. You can actually skip this whole platforming section right there, but uh, yeah, that's it's. I think like it's frame perfect, and also it has like it's almost pixel perfect, but I am not certain uh, about that to be honest. So I would just take like the intended route, and um, 
do some platforming here and there. We also get a HP refill, which is very useful for the upcoming section. Because this is um, a section where we actually have to race against time. Because there is a platform coming up, w which moves all the way up and down to the next area. And if I don't do this section perfectly, I won't be able to get the platform. And this saves quite a lot of time if I get it. But I think I already, yeah, I already messed it up, so I have to wait here. If you did it correctly, like, the platform would be at the spikes right now. But if you mess up one or two things, you immediately have to wait for this side. Luckily, like, it's not super important to get it, since, like, you just have to wait a couple of seconds. But in PB attempts, you would have to reset there, because 8 to 10 seconds, I think. Yeah, that's a long time. So now, this is the Pharaoh boss. Um, of course, it's a huge Pharaoh mask. But, and there's a trick that you can do. You can clip into the wall, and then you can just um, slash all the way. And then, like, you can just attack every time. If you do it correctly, you save, like, two seconds. So it's, And if you don't do it, you lose, like, two seconds as well. Just by getting hit and ha being in the position where you can just normally attack him. I tried to go for it there, but yeah, it didn't work out, unfortunately. Anyways, I thought uh, Act 1, that's like where pretty much like the hardest levels start. Um, Act 1 of Itos starts with an auto-scroller. Unfortunately, like, there's nothing that you can do to speed up this process, so I usually just do whatever. If I get hit there, it doesn't really matter too much. I kind of want to reserve your HP a little bit, but again, it really doesn't matter too much. Like, there will be uh, an HP refill in the second area, where we can uh, just take along to the on the boss. So. But yeah, um, as for the story, so you're this character called the Master, and... You're trying to cleanse the world from evil after, like, the demons uh, from a demon lord called Tantra, uh, like, invaded uh, the realm, and, yeah. And in order to do that, you need to defeat the demons so, like, the, the people from this land can live there again, and then you have to populate it, which is the simulation part of the game. Also, I got so much HP. I should actually, I should absolutely just tank Garrett until like the HP refill. Anyways, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the story. <laughs> it's a very simple story. And um, yeah. Anyways, so Itos is, as you may notice, just a mountainous area. And first we have to climb a volcano and go to a waterfall. So this is the water serpent. And as you can see, like, you don't really have a lot of platforms here. So, in order to do that, I will try to stay almost at the edge on the platform, so I can get as many hits in as possible. Preferably, I can get five hits in, but if I get four hits in every time he attacks, that's good. Three is a little bit dicey, simply because my HP at this point gets very low from, like, tanking the enemy. But that's good. That was all right. Anyways, uh, now with Idol's Act One cleared, Act Two is a completely different beast. Um, I will have to focus a little bit on the starting section because I will have I will do um, a death warp here. So I have to tank a couple of enemies here and there. Also. I am jumping backwards so I can damage boost through like a couple of uh, enemies. All right, okay, good. Okay, okay. So I will take a death here simply just uh, that I get my HP refilled. And uh, can do this section a little bit faster. Otherwise, like you would have to. Uh, kill like all of them. You can skip most of them, but depending on like this little flying thingy, it just gets a little bit more annoying. So another damage boost down there, we grab the apple here, and then we go to the fire wheel. 
Um, that fire wheel boss luckily is very simple. Um, he doesn't really pose any threats whatsoever. So we just stand on this platform and swing with our sword a couple of times. And that's it. Like, he really doesn't do anything dangerous. <laughs> Like most bosses, to be honest. But yeah, that was pretty much like the hardest stage in the entire game, um, for me at least. So that I'm glad that like it worked perfectly. Uh, Marano Act Two has um, two wall clips that I'm going to attempt. The first one in, is in this area, where um, there is a statue all the way to the right, and he will shoot an arrow. And I have to jump and get hit by the arrow and... I don't know, I'm getting those tricks first try. <laughs> Usually this one is like one of the harder ones to do. Simply because you have to... Uh, like you have to wait until he turns around. You also have to jump... We'll take a little bit of extra damage there, but that's fine. But yeah, that's not the actual most difficult wall clip. Um, the second one is going to be this one. This is Raffle Slasher. So, we'll, we just wait until, like, this green Ted comes here, and yeah, okay. Usually you just have one shot to do that. If you don't do that, you cannot get clipped into the wall, and then um, he's a little bit of a pain to deal with. But luckily, with some RNG manipulation, by just standing on very specific spots, you doesn't pose any threat whatsoever. That's unfortunate that I didn't get this wall clip because that one is um, the hardest one and it also saves like 10 seconds if you get it correctly since you can just jump upwards to him and then just use uh, your basic attacks to defeat him that way. So Maharana Act 2, that one, you are first in a swamp and then you get into a temple. And that area is very simple. There's like no real fights that we have to do. You pretty much just damage all the way until the end. And since like everything deals two damage, it completely doesn't matter. Okay, so I wait here until like this fireball explodes so I can just jump over here safely. Also, there, yeah, there is death in this game, and he's just a normal enemy. He's not even a boss, you know? Crazy, right? Uh, there is a secret apple there that we're going to grab, and this boss, I don't really remember the name, but... Um, so, what you want to do is you want him to fall all the way down and uh, then attack him like that. Sometimes, whenever you're standing in a very specific position, he does a lightning attack, like that. And that's a bad thing. If he does a lightning attack, we just cannot attack him. And it seems like he just does, doesn't want to, to <laughs> crush me. Okay, that's fine. Especially, like, you can just defeat this boss with ease. Just have a yeah, at the end. Uh, that was bad. that was unfortunate with three lightning attacks. Oh, it wasn't four. Uh, you one of them. Otherwise, it, like it's really bad if he does that many lightning attacks. And since like we did pretty much all of the areas now, we're in North Wall, and of course this is the ice stage, right? Because we always need to be in a winter area in those adventure games. And that one, um, North Wall un is not really a difficult area per se, but um, as you can see, like every, every you have slippery slopes that slow you down usually, but you can also use the slopes for our advantage by getting like a boost in our jumps. Okay. Um, yeah, usually we cannot get the cycle anyways, so we just have to wait here. Okay. So this, the third room, um, there's a platform that we have to wait here, and there is a chance that I will just get hit twice, if I'm very unfortunate. Because those eyeballs just spawn randomly at any point in the stage. Luckily I didn't get hit there, so this makes this section a little bit faster. Um, I think I will also take a death here, just... Uh, no, actually, I'm fine, I think. But unfortunately I have to defeat a couple of enemies here. 
Because they're a little bit in our way. There is like one particular damage boss that I need to do. Also, yeah, the music is great in this game. Okay. Thank you. So I will grab the uh, apple here just to fill up any HP. Technically, I could just slash through those, but it's actually faster to grab the apple in that case. Because those statues that you, that, that you see should take three hits, and that's very slow. Like the axe guy. So this is the um, merman, I think. Even though like he's not in the water, and he flies around. It has this name. Um, so, in order to hit him, we actually have to stand on this platform, or on those slopes. And we prefer to be on the slopes, simply, so we can maneuver a little bit easier to the, from the right to the left. Now, that was a good fight. Usually, like, two side cones is, like, the fastest that you can do. If that was, like, another cycle, you would actually hit him in the third one relatively fast. So, now it comes North Wall. And North Wall has, again, those eyeballs that spawn randomly. And a bunch of other obstacles that are relatively small. So, we just have to try to dodge this. And then there is a wall clip that we can do here. And somehow I got that one first try as well. <laughs> anyway, so we don't want to get hit by as many eyeballs as possible, but um, if we get hit by one or two of them, unfortunately, nothing much that we can do. Okay, I will play a little bit safe here because I got hit way too many times by this one next guy. Yeah, okay. That's unfortunate. That's a very costly death because now I'm all the way to the bottom again and I have to do the wall clip again. And I thought like uh, the bird will die in like uh, two hits. And now, of course, I don't do the wall clip properly. Yeah, okay. And I actually have to do the wall clip here because um, it otherwise like you would have to walk all the way around and that's really annoying. So. This also means since I got hit way too many times here, I also have to hit a couple of enemies here and there. Alright. Well, at least, like, we get uh, to hear this music again. Okay. So, the second part of the big tree is we actually have to jump all the way up. up and, like, there's green bubbles that lets you move all the way up. And then there is the... That was a little bit spicy. So there, we have those green bubbles that um, move all the way up. Then we have the yellow bubbles that just explode at one point. And the blue bubbles, if you jump on them, they will just stand in place and then... So this is the Arctic Wyvern. Um, Arctic Wyvern usually either swipes or he shoots fireballs and... Well, like ice balls in that case. <laughs> and the ice balls are the one thing that we don't want to see because we cannot attack him as often as we would like to. Usually we want to see him swipe and that gives us either two to four hits depending on where he is while swiping uh, down. But that's pretty good. Alright. Okay, now we pretty much finished all of the main stages and now we have to do a boss rush where all the second act bosses appear and they are way faster now than the previous counterparts. So there is there will be definitely times where I have to die once or twice to refill my HP because you don't get any HP results. So first of all, Minotaur, if you try to do a hitless round of this game, this is where you will usually completely die. <laughs> because like he attacks so fast, there is like no way that you can attack him as many times as possible while avoiding him. There is no way. You will always take damage here in the speedrun. There is legit no chance. Zeppelin Wolf, same as in the first fight, where we have to pray that we get a good platform. And if he spawns all the way up there, that's very bad. And in the refight, yeah, he, he shoots his lightnings faster. Which is a bit unfortunate. Now I pray that I that he doesn't spawn up there. If that happens, no reason to go for it. <laughs> yeah! I guess we play a little bit of a waiting game. Okay. Okay. If he does that, 
but if he goes on the second platform, yeah, we just kill him. Yeah, we usually want to skip the transformation phase. If you kill him, if you kill Zeppelin Wolf before he transforms, which is after the first half of the HP bar, um, it will save quite a long time. But since like we got such a bad pattern anyways, I should just said, yeah, you know what, screw it, just. Go ahead, go ahead. Anyways, um, the Pharaoh refight. Very simple. I tried to go for another wall clip here, but yeah, that one again is not super. Now the fire wheel again. He moves way faster than in the actual fight, so. So we all have to be a little bit careful. And also his bullets much faster. But again, he's not really a threat. Okay. I'm at 2 HP. Um, I think I will take a death here, just um, for safety reasons. Because otherwise you would have to fight like boss over again. And this refight especially, if he shoots lightning, that's bad. Um, because, like, the, pu the bullet shoots really fast. Huh? Depending on where you're standing, you sometimes just straight up cannot avoid it. Okay, so usually what we, we can get three to four hits in there. I will usually just go for three, just again for safety reasons. And to re uh, preserve some HP for the Wyvern coming up after this. Uh, I could have gone for another one, but again, just doing it for a second. The Arctic Wyvern, I'm um, not only is he faster, but he like also has like the ice balls that he shoots. Um, like whenever you hit the slow, there's like a, some like ice blocks that are also spreading around. It has a way further hitbox than it's supposed to be, so you, whenever he does it, you really want to stay behind him. Okay. And usually, you since like he's faster, you, you will usually just get three hits in. And after that, we're at the final boss, so I just hope that he gives us a good pattern here at the end. Um. I can just skip this because usually this is not a really big threat. But I will try. Now nah, I will just I will just stop here and uh, get some HP back. And of course, he all of these uh, fireballs just go all the way to the <laughs> right. You usually want to if you have enough. Anyways, so for the first phase, there's just a floating head, and now our attack actually shoots a shoots a beam, which is nice because this it makes it a little bit less painful to actually go to him, because otherwise you would have to jump uh, jump over him. Anyways, again, same here. So, what you what what I, it, this cycle is always the same, where where he swipes down, uh, shoots three bullets, uh, shoots a big laser, spawns those pellets, and you can hit both of those pellets at the same time, which makes it a little bit less painful for uh, for uh, attacking. While his arm is open. But yeah, uh, that's the final boss. And um, get ready on time. And with that, we actually did that defeat Actraiser, and it's time. And now, in the end, we defeated the big bad demon and all of his disciples. And now everything shines bright and everyone is happy. And that's it, yeah. That's Actraiser professional mode as played by a very professional speedrunner. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, instead of like the story where you see like how like the cities are developing and what you have done, it just shows the credits and that's pretty much it at the end. There's like nothing special that can happen at the end. Yeah. Very easy, very simple, and there is actually nothing much I can tell or say about this game. Yeah, it's it's a good game. Like if you have the chance to play like an SNES game that you have probably never heard of, Actress is definitely a game that I can recommend if you really want to. And um, yeah, that's it for me for now. I think like we can just go to the next run. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you do enjoy the marathon.